what, what I plan to do yep. is explain how you start, how you run the sample from scratch. Okay. Yeah. That's okay. Yeah, that's great. So we've got a we've got a laptop here, and we're just uh, panning in on the uh, on the screen here. What we're going to do now is just introduce a sample. This is the Coulter LS uh, two two thirty, and uh, this is the uh, module, the fluid module here, and this is the front of it. It's important beforehand, um, and I'll show this later, that when it's transported, the locking screws on the locking plate will be in the home position. Before the instrument is used, it's important to back them off uh, with a uh, uh, with a small um, Allen key, and uh, again, we'll do uh, to show you that uh, later on in the video. Okay, over to you. Okay. Uh, to actually run the sample, uh, I'll start off. We go to the run screen at the top there. Yep. Run, and then we'll highlight run cycle. Run cycle, yep. That brings us up with a menu, a uh, little window, and we can then select what we need to do. At the start of the day, you will want to measure the offsets. Yep. Align it, measure the background, measure loading, which is where you actually have the sample. Enter the sample information and run information, and start the run. Okay. So I've clicked all of those, and I'll just go over to start. And the first thing it's going to do is measure the offsets. Okay. It's going to measure the offsets. The offsets are essentially the current that is being detected by the detectors with no light falling on them, effectively like an electronic background. Okay. So it turns the light, uh, the laser light off, and then simply looks at the detector voltages, and this will be subtracted as a, as a background. Okay. Right. That normally lasts for about 30 seconds. Yep. And you can see the time ticking away down on the top there. Yep. Well, it's going down to three, two, one. And the random pattern is what we'd expect. Uh, I like you can see. Okay. Once it's measured the offsets it will then go into uh, alignment um, and it will do the alignment automatically. What happens is a uh, metal plate is put into the laser beam with a small hole in and then the um, instrument adjusts the position of the laser beam to ensure that you get uniform light falling on all of the detectors. Okay. What we're expecting to see is it effectively pretty much a straight line uh, down there, you can see it uh, just needs a little bit of adjustment at the moment. It tells you what's going on at the top here. And at the end, when it's finished its adjustment, um, it will be patchy. Okay. So we've got a straight line down there going down to about uh, detect number 21 and a little secondary peak, which will be the secondary maximum. Okay. Right. This can take 10 seconds, it can take a minute or so, depending on the uh, so while we're waiting for that to go, we'll just have a little uh, look around the uh, instrument itself. We'll be putting the sample into the top of the sample vessel here. Yep. Reducing it. Sample is pumped around into the bottom of the cell, up through the laser beam, and then back into the sample vessel uh, from the top of the cell. Continuously pumped around so uh, all of the sample gets uh, passed through the uh, measuring zone. Okay. Yeah. And this and this is the drain. I that's, presume. that's the drain. Once yep. we finish with the sample, we can drain it out, and uh, there's a facility there to pump it into the mains water so that you can rinse it automatically. You don't have to do any more other than clip it up. Okay. Okay, so we've done the alignment. It's now going to um, measure the background. That's the particles in the liquid that you have in there. Mm -hmm. uh, and again, this will be subtracted from the sample analysis at the end of the uh, sample. Okay. Uh, it allows a little bit of time. And then we've asked it to measure for 60 seconds, so it's just ticking down. And once it gets to 60, then. Yep. You can see it changing uh, second by second there. Yeah. It's continuously updating, the detectors are being swept uh, on a continuous basis. Okay. So you, mentioned, now you mentioned before that there was a sample uh, that you could introduce into the uh, top of it. There. Is, that, is, there, is that a fairly simple procedure? Or? Yeah, a uh, very simple procedure. I'm actually just going to, I've dispersed a uh, bit of control material into a glass vial 
Yep, I'm going to add some of this sample drop well, drop wires into the top of the sample. Okay, there we go. Background's almost finished. Okay. Background done, there we go. That beep tells you that it's ready for you to add sample. Okay. It comes up with measuring uh, loading obscuration, and we're aiming for around 10% okay. obscuration. It will tell us here that it's low at the moment, um, and that we need to add sample. Um, so we'll add some sample into the top of the sample vessel. I would uh, suggest you add a little bit of sample to start off with, let it pump round, yep. and then you'll see that the obscuration has gone up to about 4%, and then we'll add a little bit more sample, wait a few seconds while that pumps round. You can see that's gone up to 7% there. Yeah. Once the sample has been introduced, you then click on Done. Yeah. And it then gives you the opportunity of entering in the sample information. Okay. So whatever the sample is, I'm going to call this test. Um, if there's any particular sample ID, which we'll take out. Take that one out for the time being. Um, I'm operating it, so put my initials in. Run number, I generally start the day at one. Um, fluid you need to select, whether well, it's water in this particular case. Um, other than that, if you want any other comments, you can make them there. Otherwise, just click OK. That brings you onto the run settings, where you can adjust the speed of the pump to make sure that all of the particles are kept in suspension and pass through the um, sensing area how long you want it to run for, how many runs you want to make. Some people like to make, for example, three runs. If I put in three, then I get the opportunity of averaging all three runs. Um, mm -hmm. I can wait for seconds between runs, so if we're looking at changing systems, well, we can do that. We can pop that back to one. I'm going to ask it to calculate sizes during the run. This is where you have to use the optical model to get the most accurate data. Uh, this particular sample is a garnet. We have some optical models in there already. And I'm going to choose garnet to match up with the material. And I'm going to save the file. Uh, the folder I'm going to change. documents and then once we're happy we can press OK. Starts run it will tip down um, and then it will come up with size distribution because we've asked it to calculate during the run and these are 15 nominal 15 micron garnet material. You can see we've actually asked it to display the statistics on the screen, and 15.27 is what it's giving us, so it's rather than spec. Okay. So it's uh, measuring for, for one minute. At the end of that time, it will save the data to the file that we've asked it, my documents. If we don't wish to see cumulative and differential at any time, we can just switch to differential, for example. Or if you want cumulative undersized, there are various options uh, that you can display at any time. Okay. Once it reaches the end of the run, then you'll be able to access the overall statistics. Go to analyze. 
analyze, for example. And then we can get statistics. Uh, this will depend on what you've asked it to display. In this particular case, it's fairly limited statistics. Or we can then go and uh, print graph out to get a listing uh, what you actually get displayed on the screen and the drop down it so we can get a, a listing of the information that you can actually okay. um, if you go back to graph uh, the that same information can be obtained by pressing icons further up depends on your preference and then on the Sorry, if you want to print out a report, you go to print reports. Oops, sorry, one. Okay. <laughs> no printer selected. <laughs> okay. But in terms of the uh, report, this is the sort of thing. And it gives you the option of what graphs you want to have. So if you select graphs, you can then select the type of graph, differential, cumulative, oversized, cumulative, undersized. You can press statistics, click on statistics, and then you get the option of various statistics. Statistics? I don't know if that's the right word. Yeah. <laughs> um, A variety of different uh, yeah. Yes. Yeah. values. Uh, values, yeah. Which are selectable. Um, you can export the data to an Excel type format. You can change the page setup so you can have a full page graph or a half page graph. You can change the colours, etc. Great. Um, okay. And that's it. And that's that's pretty much it, is it? Yeah. Yeah. Once you finish the sample, um, you can go up to control and then press the uh, rinse. Okay. And it will automatically, if it's plumbed into the water, rinse itself um, until you tell it to stop. And if we press that now without a tube on, presumably it would go all over the uh, yeah. <laughs> all, over, all over the bench. Yes. Okay. So we'll do that now. Um, and that's pretty much the end of the video, I guess. Yeah. So that's, thank you very much for that. So uh, Nick Edmund, Richmond Scientific, signing off. Hope that's been useful.